Hello everybody, uh, I'm Larry Perkins and um, I'm a sculptor and I made this piece called Taquincha some years ago. Everyone says, well, what is Taquincha? It's the Arapaho Cheyenne word for little pale deer. But this is not a deer, it's a North American pronghorn. It's also not an antelope, but that's what everyone calls it. The North American pronghorns are native to North America, and they are not found anywhere else in the world. So they're unique to our region. In Wyoming, they're so plentiful that people think of them as pests almost. But they are uh, endangered in some areas, and a flock of them, or a herd of them, used to live right here in this area. So a few years ago, we had a conversation. Gary Debus was the uh, general manager of HRCA at the time, and we talked about putting a sculpture of a pronghorn someplace to memorialize the presence of the herd long ago. When they lived here and the Indians lived in this region as well and of course hunted them. So one thing led to another and we ended up with this piece with its Indian name and it uh, has been here since uh, I believe 2003. So uh, it's a cast bronze and it will be here until, who knows, it might be here 5,000 years. It might be here after all of those people are gone, I don't know. But in any case, a pronghorn is not as large as this piece. It's um, about 20% smaller than this. But if we wanted a commanding presence of a sculpture here, we would have had to put a life-size one on a pedestal. And instead we decided to let it be at ground level so people can commune with it if they want to. And as a consequence, it's an enlarged piece, but it's pretty close to the real thing. The pronghorn is a an unusual creature. Uh, it has horns, but it does shed part of those horns. Antelopes do not shed their horns. Uh, deer and other animals with antlers shed their antlers completely. The pronghorn is somewhere in between. Uh, it has small very, very strong limbs. And the interesting part of this is that the antelope evolved with cheetahs on the North American continent. The cheetahs are gone, but the pronghorns have survived. After about the first hundred yards, this animal can outrun a cheetah which is supposed to be the fastest animal on the planet. But these guys can run all day. They can outrun a jeep in, in rough territory. And their legs are designed not to break if they happen to trip in a, in a prairie dog hole. So these guys take off and processing a huge amount of wind through a big windpipe, they just run. But they cannot jump a fence. I'll wait for those motorcycles to go by. Pronghorns go underneath the fences. So in areas where the farmers and ranchers are aware of this, they put the bottom strand of the fence up a little higher above the ground. The pronghorns spread their front legs and scoot under the fence. Because the pronghorns who lived around here got encroached on by the development of the housing developments, the herd migrated through areas that weren't fenced 
and moved down the Santa Fe area, moved all the way around and ended up in the area around the Sky Ridge Hospital over on I-25. If you keep your eye open when you're driving down I-25, sometimes you can see them uh, looking at you with this faraway gaze that they seem to have. The pronghorn has very, very sharp eyesight and can spot you before you spot him. And that's one of the things that intrigues people when they stop by the roadside and look at a herd of these guys that are so far away that the animals are tiny. But they're looking at you. And that's because of this incredible eyesight. Uh, let's see. The, uh, the other thing that's unique is this thing here. Uh, I've been asked quite often what this is exactly. It is the rump hair that the animal has uh, the hair follicles have the rectal tissue in them and this is a patch of hair that has been raised signaling each other, alerting them that there is danger with these white patches of tail hair. Normally, this lies flat and the rope is just a curl. Um, this is a bronze casting. It's hollow, like all hard bronzes. It weighs around 350 pounds. It takes a long time to make. And it has a, uh, a value that is commensurate with these kinds of bronzes. But there's also an artist component in that. When we were considering making this piece, I contacted a world-class sculptor here in Denver named Ken Bunn and asked if he could do a pronghorn for us similar to the semi-abstract one that he did for the Denver Zoo. And he said, well, yeah, I, I can do that. It'd be about $150,000. And I told that to Gary Davis, and he said, I don't think we could take up that big a collection. So I made the piece. This was my first animal piece, and uh, Ken Bunn advised me to use a goat as the anatomical model. But instead, I went to the Denver Zoo, uh, Denver uh, Natural History Museum, and they have a piece that is a stuffed pronghorn. It's very scruffy and scroungy. It's in a back room where you don't get to see it. But I was able to kind of live with that thing long enough to get a very, very good idea up close and personal as to what these guys are like. And that is how we ended up with a realistic sculpture of a pronghorn in its old home here in Hans Ranch. Now I'll take questions from the audience. Can, can you give a little background as to what got you interested in sculpting uh, from a teenager or a young adult? Sure, absolutely. The question is, how did I happen to be a sculptor in the first place? Uh, and the answer is that my career was 40 years in the aerospace business. Uh, people jocularly call us rocket scientists. <laughs> But then, uh, I got married to my beautiful wife, Diana. I retired early. We moved to Seattle, which is one of the most artistic places anywhere in the country. 
and I had this urge to make 3D artwork. I can't draw. I'm, I'm a terrible two-dimensional artist. But I found that I had a knack for making solid uh, objects and I particularly learned that I wanted to do people. So most of my work over the years has been figurative human representational art uh, and that's what I prefer. I started out making race cars. I'm an old car guy. Uh, as soon as I started doing people, I didn't want to do cars anymore. So the other thing I did was I accidentally got into making bronzes. Bronzes to me were just the most fascinating kinds of sculptures, but they are also brutally expensive. And so I learned almost more than I wanted to know about bronze casting, but uh, I, it still is the thing that I prefer and that I admire in other people's work. So I ended up working as a sculptor for 20 some years, had some success. And I'm very, very pleased to have been able to contribute to this, which is, you know, here at home. And I'm, I'm tickled to be a part of the Highlands Ranch Art Development. I'm a member of the Art Encounters Program Committee that does about uh, 20 to 25 loaner pieces around the county each year and about six to eight of those end up being in Highlands Ranch. And there's a whole program around that called, I say, Art Encounters. It's a very beautiful way to bring art to the people and particularly the youngsters because uh, people in other parts of the world and other parts of this country grow up living with public art. Uh, we've had a harder time getting it going here, but I think our program speaks for itself. Do I presume you have 10 or 15 percent of your house uh, dedicated to some type of a studio where you can put this together? Dan, I have about a thousand square feet in the basement, and uh, that's dedicated to my studio, my work. However, the ceiling is only nine feet. So if I want to make a colossal, monumental piece, uh, it has to be shorter than nine feet. No giraffes, huh? Or, uh, <laughs> giraffes can, can work, but we'll have to build the neck and the head in one piece and the body in another and the legs somewhere else. Uh, the basement studio works well for almost everything I've done. And in fact, my wife has uh, started a giraffe down there, but uh, her giraffe is a little smaller. <laughs> uh, I once did um, three firefighters and 10 feet of hose, life size, in that basement. So it's an interesting uh, logistical problem to get that done. <laughs> That's the story. About how many pieces do you think you've sculpted then over your sculpting career? Uh, made uh, one, two, three, six, seven or eight life size and half life size. Um, my firefighters are a unique piece. That is, it's an addition of one. Uh, in a uh, park by the waterfront in Tacoma, Washington. It memorializes the fallen firefighters of the Tacoma Fire Department. So the piece is um, three, two males and one female. It has a Caucasian, a African-American, and an Asian woman. It just about covers all the ground. And those pieces were sculpted from people local here. One was my son. One was a chap that used to work at uh, Walgreens. 
and one was a law student from DU. We did not use firefighters from their department because they preferred, you know, not to have that. And so to the Tacoma people, these were strangers, but to us, they're recognizable folks from around here. Oh yeah. This is, um, let's put it up here. No, that's not gonna work. Got too much hardware here. This thing. Oh, okay. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, this is a miniature, of course, of this piece, and uh, it's in a it's a bronze casting. It's um, one of a limited edition of fifty. These were originally made as fundraisers, actually, to help pay for this thing, which, by the way, did not cost $150,000. <laughs> and um, if you really, really wanted one of these, we can arrange to cast one to your order, and the proceeds will go to the HRCAA uh, organization that supports the arts and culture in Hollins Ranch and in Douglas County. Uh, this piece is um, quite hefty and basically indestructible. It's a piece of fine art and it's kind of cute if I say so myself. <laughs> I would say so too. It's very cute. Yeah. Thank you very much, Larry. This has been really, a, a really great. We appreciate hearing from you, the sculptor. Um, I think we all see the, the Taquincha every time we come to Westridge, and now it has a special meaning for us. Oh, so thank you very much. We appreciate it. You bet. Glad to do it.